That was the most incredible evening of Champions League football I think we've seen in a hell of a long time. I love the Champions League. Who doesn't? We get blessed with moments like this. And as my doc says, woof. That was a really, really entertaining evening of football, both games. I primarily watched the Real Madrid-Man City game, um, but arsenal Bayern Munich seemed to provide some real great moments as well, especially with Harry Kane scoring against Arsenal. If you want to see my predictions, check out my Champions League prediction video um, and see who I think is going to win. But for now, there is so much to unpack from that three-all draw um, between Real Madrid and Man City. And it didn't disappoint. It did not disappoint at all. This is always a classic fixture. And the fact that we're getting it in a quarterfinal is really great. I'll be honest, it started off on the front foot. It started off so quick. Within 40 seconds, we saw this moment right here. Chuameni going in for the foul on Jack Grealish. And this moment was pivotal for two reasons. The first reason is because he got booked for it, which means he's going to miss the second leg. So Real Madrid are going to have to change their back line a little bit, whether Nacho Fernandez comes in, whether another centre-back's fit that they can put in there, or they play Carver Howard centre-back, I don't know. Um, but that'll be something interesting to see. But the second reason why this was crucial is it led to this moment right here. And of course, Bernardo Silva, the little magician, uh, found that, that gap on the right-hand side of Lunin um, he was kind of flat-footed and I don't think anyone was anticipating Bernardo Silva to take the shot there, but he did and he catches Lunin out and it's 1-0 Man City. We then went on to see Man City kind of throw it away. They defended in this 5-3-2 as you can see here as Camavinga is about to take the shot. Now occasionally Rodri would drop back and it would almost form a 6-2-2. They, they really banked up on that back line to um, shut Real Madrid out from from finding the intricate passes to the likes of Bellingham or to Vinicius or Rodrigo um, and it did work uh, for what they intended but Camavinga took the shot on from distance deflects off Diaz and a little bit fortunate um, but it goes in past Ortega I don't really think that's his fault and then within what is it two minutes a minute and 50 seconds something like that Real Madrid take the lead they go 2-1 up and Man City this time were trying to press high on the front foot there was a turnover and there was this brilliant pass from um from Vinicius to find Rodrigo and Real Madrid um they almost defended in a 4-4-2 with Vinicius and um Bellingham up front as the front two and Rodrigo playing as the wide left position but when there was this turnover, Vinic uh, Rodrigo just sprints forward, almost like what we see Vinicius do on that left-hand side so often. And I think in this position, this is a Kanji here instead of um, Kyle Walker, who wasn't fit. And Vinicius um, plays that ball into space, which Rodrigo, in a foot race against a Kanji, I think it's a guarantee that <sighs> Rodrigo's always winning it, right? I'd name me a world where a Kanji beats... Um, Rodrigo in a foot race. Akanji's not fast, but I think if you have Kyle Walker here, he gets that ball before Rodrigo is uh, does. And that was a crucial, crucial moment. And Rodrigo, with a bit of luck, puts Real Madrid 2-1 up. And I thought Man City had a lot more um, opportunities to create some good chances than Real Madrid did. And I'm going to go to the tactics screen here. And they set up in this um three two four one that we see them play so often um and in the second half actually it became a three one five one um Kovacic and Stones pushed high and it set up something a bit more like this I think this was to try and really pack out that attacking line um and stretch the Real Madrid defense but for the time being uh it was more of a 3-2-4-1 as we see them play so often and I thought Grealish didn't make a lot of runs that he potentially could have he was isolated out on this left hand side against Carvajal and Kovacic as well I thought was really poor in that neither of them were willing to get forward Grealish loved the ball to feet and then we'll try and take Carvajal on now we know he's really good at drawing fouls and attacking one versus one against a defender but there are so many chances that he could have made this run or this run, and he just didn't. And similarly, Kovacic, I know we saw him play almost as a centre-back against Arsenal, but he's not bad in the attacking line. 
and he could have made this kind of run too, and he just didn't. And I feel like they missed an opportunity here, especially when they're one versus one against Carver Howe. And I'm going to show you these screenshots here. Um, thank you for Talking Tactics on Twitter um, for making these. I did think about the fact that Grealish didn't make the runs, but he already made the graphics for it. So I've stolen them from him. So thank you, Talking Tactics. But as you can see, Grealish just didn't make the runs that I think he really should have, that could have created um, a moment for Man City to get in behind. And you could argue something similar on the other side, but I think that what Man City tried to do on the right-hand side with Silva and Foden was a bit different to what they were doing with Grealish. Uh, Real Madrid defended in this 4-4-2, as I said, and it set up something a bit like this. Um, Cruz was a little bit deeper, Rodrigo a little bit further forward, but so be it, it was something like this. But as I said to you here, Mendy was a two versus one against Foden and Silva. Foden played really wide and Foden and Silva played really close together. And so how Real Madrid countered this is they would drop Cruz into a left centre-back position, almost defending in a 5-3-2 um, or a 5-4-1. And whilst it helped counter um, the numerical overload that Man City had, um, it meant that Cruz was often out of position. And whilst he's such a good midfielder, we know that, I think both times that R Man City scored again, it was kind of his fault. And we saw the first one. Cruz had dropped into this kind of position here, and it was actually Stones that was um, playing. As I said, Man City went into this 3-1-5-1 in the second half. And Camavinga almost goes to close down Stones. But I think Cruz had... Cruz didn't get out quick enough. If Cruz got out quicker, Camavinga doesn't have to come across to cover John Stones. But as he as Cruz stayed deep for longer, Camavinga had to come across to cut off um to to push onto Stones at least, uh, press him, and get rid of this. The ball as Camavinga is coming towards Stones, Stones plays this ball into this position here. Foden did really well today, I think, at finding the little gaps. In, in between the lines, finding little pockets. And I mean, it was a stunning goal. I mean, we can give it a little, something a bit like that. I mean, it was actually more curl than that. Um, let's, do, let's do it just as, it was, it was like that. It was really entertaining. It was a really good goal and fair play to Foden. And then it's two all. And at this point, I thought Man City looked like they were back on it. I thought they'd been poor for the most part of the second half of the first half if that makes sense. I thought Man City dropped off a little bit. And again, I think Cruz is at fault for Man City's third goal. If we see the screenshots here, it's Cruz that's pushing on to Gavardio. Now, this is a left-footed player, a left-footed centre-back, playing left-back, who's taking a shot on his right foot. So granted, maybe you don't expect him to score a worldie from here, but Cruz has no reason to not get tighter to him. And he really does try to block the shot rather than give him, give Gavardio no space. I think if Cruz was just a, a yard further forward, he could prevent this goal, but he doesn't. And I do think that he's at fault again. And this is then when we saw the change from Ancelotti. He took Cruz off and he took Rodrigo off and we brought on Diaz and Modric. And this changed the game. And I want to talk to you about something called relationism. If you don't know what relationism in football, um, it's players playing close to each other with a really good chemistry, um, almost knowing where to move in relation to other players. It requires a lot of good chemistry and teams like Real Madrid often um, are so good with something like this. And Modric, instead of being like what Cruz was doing, dropping deep into the back line, he's the number 10 for a reason. He was creative. And I want to go on to Real Madrid's third goal. Now, if we look at the average positions for Real Madrid, they played in a tilted 4-3-3, uh, on the ball at least. And Bellingham, Vinicius and Rodrigo, or when Diaz came on, Diaz, um, played very, very narrow and pretty much only on the left-hand side of the pitch. Um, it was very bizarre. They pretty much just all were on that left side where Akanji is, or Man City's right side. And when Modric goes to push forward, and we can see it on the third goal, I'll put the screenshots on now, Modric goes forward and plays the ball out to Vinicius. Man City at this point are in a back four, and Real Madrid, as you can see, have got four players here. So technically Man City aren't doing anything wrong. They've gone man to man, plus Rodri should be dropping deep to help out. But as I said, this relationism, where they're all 
pretty much occupying this left-hand side of their attack. There was so much space on the right-hand side that Valverde attacked. And Valverde is such a good footballer. I mean, I think he's almost very underrated. He gets credit, but I don't think enough credit. This man can play right back, right wing, centre mid, CDM, number 10. He can play anywhere. He is phenomenal. And I mean, he took the goal so well. I don't know if Vinicius was crossing the ball to him. Um, I don't think you can blame Kovacic either for not getting back in time. I think he's in line with where he should be. But Valverde just hits it so perfectly and it flies into that bottom corner. Ortega, again, can do nothing about it. I actually don't think anyone was at fault for Man City in this goal. It was just a really, really well-created goal and they needed it. I think it just really gave them that... I don't want to say that boost to go and win it because obviously they didn't. But I think if they were then going to... Um, if they were going to the Etihad with a 3-2 disadvantage, I don't see Real Madrid coming back from that. And I think that goal was crucial, especially that away goals don't mean anything in um, Champions League as well. It just sets up the second leg so perfectly. I do think that Man City now might have the edge in the next leg, but I still favour Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid always find a way. Um, granted, they haven't against Man City the last few seasons, but I just find it so hard to to not acknowledge Real Madrid. They always just get it done. And I think with Man City having Walker, it will make it a bit harder for Vinicius and Rodrigo to um, counter like they did today against the Kanji. But I, th I don't know what's telling me. It's a gut feeling. And as you know, you trust your gut in football because anything can happen. For me, a gut feeling is still saying Real Madrid win this. Um, but I think Man City do have the upper hand. So let me know what you guys think. And also credit to Arsenal. I thought they put up a good performance against Bayern Munich. There were some mistakes. I think Rice actually had quite a poor game from what I saw anyway. And, and Gabriel had some poor moments as well. They've been so good this season. So it's hard to, to blame them really. But... Harry Kane, the, the Tottenham man, just had to be, didn't it? But regardless, we've got some perfect second legs set up for um, for the next week. And of course, more football tomorrow evening. Um, going to gonna enjoy watching that as well. PSG versus Barcelona. Who's excited? I am. I am. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know who do you think is going to win the second legs um, in the comments below. And who's going to win it all? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you very soon.